Students, welcome back to the biology class. We are discussing chapter plant life. In our previous classes, we learnt about photosynthesis. That is, it is the process in plant life due to which green plants are able to make their own food. We also discussed various conditions required for photosynthesis. That is, sunlight, water and minerals, carbon dioxide, chlorophyll, and temperature. We also discussed significance of photosynthesis. Now we use a number of appliances in our daily life. They all require energy to work. Energy can be in the form of electrical energy or chemical energy in the form of batteries. Similarly, plants require energy to perform various functions. In plant cells, glucose is the primary source of energy. This energy is released from glucose by a process called respiration. So today, we will be discussing the process of respiration. The process by which food or glucose is broken mostly in the presence of oxygen to release energy is known as respiration. Respiration can be of two types, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen whereas anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. Let us first discuss aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration takes place in the presence of oxygen. Cellular respiration is mostly aerobic in nature. Amount of energy released in case of aerobic respiration is high. It takes place in almost all the plants and animals. If we look at the equation of aerobic respiration, glucose in the presence of oxygen breaks down into carbon dioxide and water and energy is released. The energy released is in the form of energy molecules called ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Now let us understand aerobic respiration with the help of this video. Aerobic means with air and so needs oxygen, whereas anaerobic respiration doesn't need oxygen. Let's start by looking at aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration releases energy in cells by breaking down food substances whilst in the presence of oxygen. It is represented by this simplified equation. But don't forget the energy which is released. Glucose is broken down by oxygen to release the byproducts of carbon dioxide and water. Energy is released, which is then used to make a special energy molecule called ATP. ATP is how energy is stored for later use by the body. Aerobic respiration happens all the time in all cells, usually in the mitochondria. Animals get the oxygen needed from the air through their ventilation systems. Plants get their oxygen from the air through the stomata. Do you remember how photosynthesis works? Compare these two equations. You can hopefully see that aerobic respiration works in the opposite way to photosynthesis. Plants produce their food by photosynthesis and then through respiration release energy from it. But don't be confused. Whilst plants do release oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis, they don't necessarily take in this oxygen for respiration. They just take in any oxygen from the air. Plants respire throughout the day and night, as do animals but they only photosynthesize during the day, when there is light available. So this is how aerobic, or with air, respiration works. You just need to remember that glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen to release carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Let us now discuss anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. The amount of energy released is comparatively less than aerobic respiration as glucose breaks down in the absence of oxygen. Uh, anaerobic respiration takes place in both plants and animals in the absence of oxygen. Let us discuss anaerobic respiration in plants. Sometimes if soil gets waterlogged, the oxygen supply to the plants can run out. So the root cells obtain energy via anaerobic respiration. In yeast cells, anaerobic respiration is referred as fermentation. 
Fermentation is the process used for making bread and brewing alcohol. So if we look at the equation in case of anaerobic respiration in plants, we find that glucose in the absence of oxygen breaks down into ethanol and carbon dioxide and of course energy is released. Now here you can see energy produced is comparatively less than aerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, one glucose molecule releases 38 ATP molecules, while in anaerobic respiration, only two molecules of ATP are released. Let us discuss anaerobic respiration in animals. When we are doing heavy exercise for a long time, the muscles cannot always get the oxygen they need to carry out aerobic respiration. In this case, the muscle cells can switch to anaerobic respiration. In animals, anaerobic respiration produces lactic acid as the glucose is not fully broken down. So glucose in the absence of oxygen releases lactic acid and very little amount of energy. If the lactic acid builds up, it can stop the muscles from working, causing cramp. This lactic acid needs to be broken down and this requires oxygen. So the amount of oxygen required to break down the lactic acid is referred to as oxygen debt. Let us now watch this video for better understanding of anaerobic respiration. Sometimes animals and plants can't get enough oxygen to respire aerobically, such as during intense exercise, but they still need to respire to survive. After all, everything relies on respiration for energy. Luckily, there is a backup plan, anaerobic respiration. In this video, we are going to have a look at anaerobic respiration in both animals and plants. Starting with animals, a cheetah sprinting to catch some prey cannot take in enough air and blood around the body fast enough for aerobic respiration. The heart and lungs can't keep up, so anaerobic respiration is carried out instead. Here is a generalized equation for anaerobic respiration. See how it differs from aerobic respiration. There is no oxygen involved in anaerobic respiration. It is much less efficient than aerobic respiration and much less energy is released. This is because the glucose is only partially broken down. Another problem is that lactic acid is produced. This is actually a poisonous chemical that if it builds up in the body, the muscle stops working and you get a muscle cramp. You can only get rid of lactic acid by taking in oxygen again and thus replacing the oxygen there. Oxygen is needed to break down lactic acid, turning it into carbon oxide and water. Do you know how you breathe deeply after intense exercise? This is your body replacing the bolt of oxygen there. So that is how anaerobic respiration works in animals. What about in plants? The oxygen supply can run out for plants too, such as in waterlogged soils. This then forces plants to have to carry out anaerobic respiration, as they too need to respire constantly. Here's a generalized anaerobic respiration equation for plants. Notice how instead of lactic acid being produced, ethanol and carbon dioxide is made instead. In haste, this process is called fermentation and it is used to bake bread and brew alcohol. So students, in today's video, we learnt about the process of respiration and its two types, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Students, have you ever thought, why do we breathe heavily after vigorous exercise? Think about it and we will discuss it in our virtual class. Till then, stay safe. Thank you.